Okay. Welcome, everybody. Um, we're just going to wait a few moments to let people join in. I can see people are joining us as we think. So, all these Zoom meetings start with a couple of minutes where we just sort of wait for a couple of people to join, and we'll do that here tonight. And then I'll get on with introductions and we can get the meeting underway. Okay, I'm just going to give people about 30 seconds and I'll start to do the introductions and people can catch up as they join. Appreciate people have joined on time. Okay, I'm going to make a start. Okay, so just to like to welcome everybody to this um, Zoom meeting as part of the engagement on the Compton Greenway. I'm David Charlesworth, I'm one of the communications managers and Greenways are some of the projects I help look after. Um, we've got a couple of presentations tonight, one by uh, Thomas, my colleague Thomas, who's a program manager at the GCP, and then a, another one on the, who will, he will cover the sort of strategic overview of what the remakes are and how Competent fits into it. And then we've got a very detailed presentation on some of the, uh, from Alex, who's the design lead, who will take you through some of uh, the, the, the detailed proposals that we're currently consulting on. Um, just remember that tonight's a, a Zoom webinar is being recorded, so we will share this on YouTube afterwards for those people that have not been able to make it. Um, normal rules of behaviour apply and everyone's mind that inappropriate contact or disruptive behaviour may be be a result from being excluded from the event. We do have technical assistance on hand, um, but you know we are all joining from home. It is very hot. I'm sure everyone's windows are open still. So if you can make sure you're on mute when you're not talking, um, that would really help. Um, and the other thing is, is once we've done the two presentations, we'll open it up to questions. There are two ways to ask questions. Um, um, first of all, um, and you can put your hand up and I can unmute you and you can ask a question. The second uh, question way to do it is to write something in the chat function. If we get a number of questions that are very similar, I'll try and brigade them together for the uh, to, on topics um, and we'll try and answer everyone's questions in the time we have available. Um, so um, on that basis, I'm going to hand over to my, co co my colleague Thomas, who's going to start the, um, the, the presentation um, on the Compton uh, Greenway. Thanks very much, David. As David just mentioned, my name is Tom Fitzpatrick. I'm the Transport Programme Manager at the Greater Cambridge Partnership. Um, and Alex is doing the slides, so I will just uh, kind of ask Alex to, to move them forward when we reach the appropriate point. So just a little bit of background uh, on the overall uh, Greenways network. So the Greater Cambridge Greenways are a network of 12 um, active travel uh, paths, um, the aim of which is to provide safe, well-connected links within Cambridgeshire for walkers, cyclists uh, and where possible horse riders. The executive board of uh, the Greater Cambridge Partnership, who are our kind of governance board, gave approval for the uh, each individual Greenways project during 2020. Uh, and Combaton was actually uh, one of the ones that was was given in December 2020 uh, from memory. Transport consultants have been appointed uh, during uh, the summer of 2021 and the development of the Greenways has been advanced through concept design work and surveys into 2022. Now what we've done is we've split up uh, the Greenways into geographical areas so as you can see uh, on your screen we have the northern routes for St Ives and Waterbeach, the southern routes uh, sourced in Melbourne, the East, Fulbourne, Horningsea, Boschams and Swathams, and uh, one of the, the West routes that we're speaking about today, uh, Hazenfield, Barton and Combaton, and we're talking about Combaton today. 
Importantly, they are also split by, sorry, just go back very quickly, Alex, thank you, uh, by consultants. So we have Atkins and WSP, who are large engineering firms. Atkins look after North and South and WSP look after the East and the West. Thank you. Alex, next slide. Um, so in terms of where we are uh, right now, um, we've completed the technical concept designs, which Alex will be taking you through the Combatin design uh, in just a moment. Uh, and we're now focusing in on the kind of preliminary design stage. That includes, um, and I'm not going to list all of these, but things including the topographical surveys. So uh, basically using uh, technical uh, apparatus to, to ensure we understand the exact levels um, that we're working to utility searches so understanding uh, what's actually underground things like gas pipes things like um, uh, telephone equipment etc um, assessment of proposed structures so ensuring that we we understand that they are feasible and, and looking at them in terms of what's required technically uh, areas like uh, environment uh, assessments so um, but you can see a few of the topics there, ecology, heritage, flooding. Uh, our approach to things like lighting, um, you know, we need to ensure that lighting uh, is, is appropriate for the area that we, we're going through. Uh, cost estimates, uh, stakeholder engagement, of which this is, is clearly part, uh, and identifying quick wins for delivery. Uh, and this whole stage takes us through to December of, of this year. Next slide, please. So in terms of Combatin Greenway, uh, which we're here to talk about this evening, the public engagement uh, for this Greenway it has been running for a few weeks now and ends on the 29th of July, so uh, next, next week. We have already done an in-person event uh, in the, the Village Hall, which we did uh, on Friday the 8th of July. Um, we have this evening this, this virtual event. We have sent out a number of uh, postcards with kind of links to, to the information um, that is available online, which includes uh, technical drawings and the survey that we're looking to, to use to get feedback. As well as that, we have a number of different uh, meetings and workshops that we've been holding, including with uh, our local authority uh, offices, so uh, people at the County Council and the District Council, the non-motorised user forum that we have, which has representatives from, from a number of different uh, groups, uh, including things like uh, the Ramblers, uh, Cam Cycle, uh, the British Horse Society, um, etc. Uh, meetings with the parish councils, um, meetings with uh, landowners, uh, and indeed we've written to uh, all landowners uh, along the route um, to kind of talk to them about surveys and offered, offered meetings where appropriate. Um, Network well, where that's uh, kind of needed, uh, not an issue for the Combatant Greenway, but it is, is for others uh, and, and national highways. And uh, the whole point of this engagement is, is to allow stakeholders and the public to comment on the emerging designs. And just, just to be clear, we're really, really looking for feedback. These are, are relatively early technical designs, um, but we're, we're hoping that the feedback we get helps guide um, the next steps of the project. Next slide, Alex. So, uh, I guess most importantly, uh, this is that this is our time scale for for the other greenways um, and for this area, Barton, uh, which appreciate this this greenway is, is very close to, will be coming in autumn. We're already out for engagement on Hazling Field, which started um, a week after Combatin, so finishes in about two weeks' time, um, and uh, we're here to talk about Combatin. We'll also be going through from, from autumn uh, with the rest of the greenways, as you can see on this slide. I'm now going to pass over to Alex, who is going to take you through the actual route itself, including the technical drawings. Um, so over to you, Alex. Thank you, Thomas. Uh, evening, everyone. So, yeah, I'd like to take um, everyone through the, the design drawings. Um, so appreciate it. it can be a bit of a challenge, but we'll, we'll try and make things as, as big and easy to read and view as possible. Um, so the route itself, uh, here's the sort of overview route um, as, as it comes on the uh, websites sorry i'll just get a pointer up there we go 
so yes so um as you'll you'll know it runs from the the proposed route runs from Compton village uh along to long road and then up long road um with a spur out to hardwick um connecting through a right of way to coton um and then along to the uh, along through coton to the m11 bridge through the university campus out onto adams road uh, and then down Grange Road, and then out Sidrick Avenue onto Cambridge Silver Street. Um, these form the sort of key links of the Greenway itself. They obviously link in as well as possible into the general county scheme. So um, things like the existing connections from, from the end of Adams Road into town um, don't form part of the Greenway, but the aim is to tie in as well as possible and um, enable the county to to take further or future schemes forward that tie into this greenway. So that looks like this on a uh, satellite imagery. So um, we'll follow this sort of alignment um, in the detailed drawings. We'll start in Combatin and we'll move towards Cambridge. So if you bear with me for just one moment while I put up the drawings. Alice, is, is it just worth noting that we have multiple options with Hardwick as well? Um, because I appreciate there's a line on this map. Yeah, yeah. So this line is relatively straight, but um, the view is to have some sort of detailed um, further engagement with the landowner about the, the, the best route um, that enables the best route for, for users um, traveling through the land, but also has the least impact on their farm operations and things like that. Obviously it's an existing farm and they, they have activities like having combine harvesters and things using the farm tracks. So um, we'll talk a bit more about that, but yeah, happy to have any uh, detailed questions about that Hardwick route. So if we come on to the detailed design drawings, so same again, just in a technical form. Um, each of these squares is a drawing, so uh, and, and these are all available on the website um, if you'd like to, to sort of really zoom in on any particular uh, sections that you're interested in. So, Starting then at Combatin College. So the existing um, shared path comes along the northern side um, and that will remain as is. Um, we'd like to introduce on West Street some traffic calming on the entrance to the village um, to improve that existing uh, gateway treatment with the speed signs, if you know it, uh, with the view just to, to sort of introduce vehicle traffic to to the village and um, advise them that it is a village and that they should manage their speed appropriately. Um, we're proposing a new zebra crossing um, at the entrance point as well to sort of bolster that feeling that you're entering a village. It's a bit of a change um, from, from the open road um, further to the east. And that will let the students um, get from Combatin College over to the sealed track on the north side. There's not currently a footway on the south side there. That will be the start of an on-road advisory lane that will run through the length of the village. So the approach with this is that we have um, designated wide advisory lanes on the side of the carriageway. Um, just showing a safe space for cyclists. If cars overtake or need to overtake cyclists, they, they should exit the lane. Um, but some of the widths, as you'll know, are quite narrow. So in some locations, it sort of shows and that the intention is to um, have a visual cue to all the drivers that it's just not wide enough there to really safely pass a cyclist. So um, you may have to wait behind. So as well as that, this will be um, helped by traffic calming in the form of reconstructed junctions. So we want to tighten the corners of, of the side roads so that approach speeds are managed so that people can't um, sort of come out of these side roads faster than we want them to. And all of that will combine to create a slower speed environment for cars traveling through Combatin. The intention is to have a 20 mile an hour speed limit through 
Comberton village. And that combined with, with the um, volume of traffic should make uh, a bit of a more comfortable environment for people needing to cycle on the carriageway. So the same features continue through. So tightening the corners of Green End. Um, we will be running uh, what we call tracking software, which um, simulates large vehicles needing to turn. And we'll make sure that the corners are designed in a way that any occasional large vehicles or more frequent large vehicles as they may be, um, are able to make these turns safely. This may mean that they have to take corners a bit widely, but with the volumes, um, shouldn't be an issue, but that's all naturally balanced to make sure that the operations are all safe as possible for all the users. So they are shown relatively indicatively here until we can get the really detailed um, survey information, which comes in at the next design stage for us, but this shows the intention. Um, we'd also like to put in some raised tables just to improve the crossings across. And again, slow speeds for vehicles coming out of Green End and coming into Green End and South Street as well. This continues along um, towards yeah, the Long Road roundabout. So the proposal there is to have a um, new zebra crossing just on the western arm of the roundabout um, that will be able to um, be used by vehicles and cyclists so cyclists will be able to re-enter uh, re the road using the zebra crossing. Um, this northern section will be a shared path link, and that will take us through to the, um, to the greenway section. Uh, so this will be usable by pedestrians and cyclists. Um, cyclists, if they're not as confident using the roundabout, but equally uh, for those cyclists that are comfortable using the roundabout, they'll still be able to do that. So then we enter the long road section and let me see if I can rotate this. Maybe not. So I'll just try and rotate the drawings just so north is always pointing up so that we can get through this. So here's that, that um, zebra crossing we were just speaking about um, towards Combatant Village over there. There we go. So this um, shared path section will also have a, um, a new long refuge in the central island here. Um, for which will be long enough for a cycle to be able to wait um, for, for a gap in traffic. And then um, they'll be able to join the new path section. So this proposed path section will run on the field side. Um, so if, if you know the area, there's a ditch running in this white area here. So we're just looking to be on the field side of the ditch there. Um, the gray portion is a three meter proposed sealed surface. And the green section is a proposed clear area um, available to any users, but also able to be used by um, horse riding uh, particularly. And yeah, anyone wanting to, to run or jog on, on grass or walk their dog on the grass section. Um, and that section will be kept clear in the design so it's continuous. So when it, wherever you see this green section, that will be the intention there and the sealed section there to ensure that it's as smooth as possible for any wheeled users, people with mobility scooters, cyclists, um, and yeah, any people want, wanting to walk on a smooth surface. So this formation runs on the field side to the north, all along Long Road on the eastern side of the ditch. And that continues to the north. Um, part of our engagement already has flagged that we'd like to have some access points from the side roads on Long Road. So from Harbour Avenue, say, over the ditch so that you can get to and from Harbour Road, Fox, Fox's Way and um, Branch Road to the north uh, over the ditch and to the Greenway. 
and that's fairly sensible and the kind of feedback that we're looking to get really um, to make these as most as usable by the, the greatest number of people. So this proposal continues north through um, a long, long road uh, on the field side of the ditch. And um, if the hedge is there, some section has hedge, some doesn't, but behind the hedge, so shielded as much as possible from the, the long road traffic. At the caravan park, we then propose to come back out over the ditch and on the verge, just to reduce any impact on the, um, or just to get around really the, the existing um, caravan park there, and then returning back over the ditch behind the hedges and behind the ditch. So with this proposal, relatively minor um, impacts on, on the hedges, only where we're crossing back and forth, um, but generally the approach is to, to leave any trees, hedges um, alone as much as possible. That continues all the way to the north, approaching Bourne Brook. So this blue line is Bourne Brook then. Um, this will be sort of a junction where this section goes off towards Hardwick. And this section continues north along Long Road. So at this area then, we're proposing a narrowing of Long Road down to six metres if possible with the exact dimensions to be confirmed once we've got that detailed survey information. And the view is there to create a visual narrowing of the of long road to manage speeds again. So to introduce an element of sort of shyness for the vehicles that they're not willing to go full pelt through there. Uh, we do have speed surveys of long road that have come to us relatively recently. They were done the last um, couple of months, last month, I think. Um, the, the feedback has come back and that's forming our, our view about what's uh, happening on long roads and uh, any issues with speeding. So speeding on long roads, part of a focus to make sure that this um, crossing works as well as possible. So it's proposed um, at grade at the moment. So reducing this width of long road as much as possible and locating the crossing at a point that's at the crest. So just before the dip down towards Braun Brook so that you've got as much of a view as possible to the north and south along Long Road before deciding to cross. Uh, and the width being a bit narrower makes it also a bit easier to cross and a bit safer. Um, there were in the previous proposals or in, in the consultation materials proposals for an underpass, which we've been looking at as well, uh, as, well as this proposal. Um, this jagged line is the flood boundary of Bourne Brook. Um, and having sort of a, a, a deep um, underpass at this location uh, is causing a bit of issues with, with water entering the underpass. So that's part of what we've been looking at. Um, so this is the proposal that we're coming forward with um, currently while we um, look at the underpass option in a bit more detail, but at, as it stands, it's looking very expensive and very difficult to implement a um, underpass in this location at the moment. That then, the, the Greenway then continues to the north along, um, along Long Road. There'll be a new bridge over Bournebrook proposed. This length uh, is has been specified just to stay out of the flood zone. We're doing some detailed flood modeling of Bournebrook to establish just how small we can make that. We obviously want to want the structure to be as small as possible so it fits neatly into the landscape and it's um, as, as cheap as possible and uh, as well while reducing its impact on or any impact really on Bourne Brook um, to the minimum possible. So it's shown a bit large on that drawing but um, the intention is that it'll be come down smaller as we move into the more detailed design um, stages. So then this is that bridge we were just speaking about. So rotating again, um, the path then continues and joins the existing bridal way. So we'd like to take the path again through the field side of the um, existing copse of trees here to reduce any impact and any need to 
remove vegetation. Uh, so as soon as it's past the clearing, um, we join the existing bride away uh, alignment. And again, with the side-by-side -side arrangement of the sealed three meter path and clear grass strip alongside. So that runs towards Coton. along this section here uh, with any minor culverts that we need to cross ditches and things like that um, along the alignment of the right of way before rejoining the carriageway just to the north of the existing farm access there and joining Whitwell Way heading towards Coton. So due to the traffic volumes and speeds being relatively low on Whitwell Way, there's not really much need to provide dedicated cycling infrastructure. So also it's quite narrow there. So we're looking to have um, walk-in cycling um, on, on the existing carriageway provisions. And that continues along Whitwell Way through Coton. Um, at Coton Primary School, um, while we're in the neighborhood, so to speak, we're looking at um, providing a raised table and a new school keep clear in front of the school just to manage their um, pick up and drop off activity uh, a bit better. And then that comes out from Whitwell Way to High Street and then approaching the Cambridge Road High Street Junction. So this junction we're proposing to install new curbs and again narrowing the corner radius to reduce speeds as much as we can. Um, and, and make the environment seem a bit more friendly. This also has the benefit of if you're a cyclist coming out here, currently it's quite wide on that arm of the junction. So there's a temptation for vehicles to undertake cyclists, which isn't um, particularly pleasant or, or safe. So this arrangement will be such that it'll be a bit more orderly. Um, and it means that the cyclists will have a, a, a clearer path of priority and that drivers will um, be more clear about how they'll need to drive around any cyclists using it. So this section of the high street is quite constrained in having um, properties and things to the north and south. So um, cyclists are proposed to stay on the carriageway, moving through high street. Um, we're looking at further traffic calming in the form of um, gateway treatments to the north and south of this section to manage um, the speeds again and create awareness for drivers that this is part of the greenway um, and it's for this short section before we enter the footpath so the treatment on the footpath again is is relatively simple uh, similar to the Cambridge Road Junction where currently all of this colored section is a very large patch of asphalt um, we'd love to reintroduce some formality to that junction with an uh, with an island and curb arrangement and a more clear um, turning bay for those exiting the footpath or entering the footpath. Then moving on to the footpath. We're looking to um, narrow the footpath and remove parking. So this is a proposed fence along the south to try and control the game day parking um, and make sure that there's enough width remaining for vehicles to um, use the footpath and for cyclists to use it as well. So on the north side, planting bays, which won't be able to be planted on, uh, sorry, parked on. And on the south side, um, some, some low timber fencing. Um, as part of those proposals, there was a proposal to extend the um, cricket ground car park to accommodate that game day parking, um, which is where this proposal has been set. So very keen to hear feedback on, on that arrangement um, and yeah, uh, how that, that will be. But as part of these proposals, the footpath will be resurfaced and um, yeah, form a clearer part of, of the Greenway. That then continues into the existing M11 footpath, which has recently be resur been resurfaced. Um, not much further works are proposed to, um, to that section because it's been so recently done. Um, 
it will be integrated into the wayfinding proposal. So um, if there's signage and things like that, they'll be added to this section. But as far as sort of heavy civil works, um, extending or widening the large embankments as you approach the M11 overbridge, um, not too much proposed there, just to, um, as it's been done so re recently. Um, that then extends to over the M11 bridge. So again, not much proposed there. We are keen to look at what, um, with high, uh, National Highways, who, who own the bridge, um, what we can do on the corners there to improve the, the visibility through there, because we're aware that they're, they're really, you know, quite tight corners. Um, and yeah, if they they seem to be quite amicable to um, improving that bridge, um, but any significant widening means really widening this batter, which is the removal of a lot of habitat there, and we're aware of badger habitats and things like that in these um, areas. So not something that we can do lightly, but it's something that could be considered with national highways. So the current path to the bridge um, runs south along Ada Lovelace Road to the right of way along here and then back up there. That's quite a sort of down and up um, treatment of it. And this, this uh, ramp up to the M11 bridge, it's especially is quite, quite high. So we're, we're looking to get a new link from the existing path uh, into the university uh, directly across the field. So if, if anyone knows it, this is the existing sort of field car park, and this is the data center um, just to the west of the M11. And so a new link through through the field uh, there. So the levels here are quite, quite flat. So um, that makes it quite nice to get a new path through there and joining into the existing path. And that will make it all a bit flatter and smoother. The path then joins into the existing relatively new path through the university. Um, and as far as the drawings, there is a bit of a hole, but that's because um, yeah, the, the existing university path is in quite good, good condition. So we were just on that drawing the university path runs along this alignment and then comes out at Adams Road. So on Adams Road now with the Wilberforce Road Junction, we're looking at changing the priority of this junction so that Wilberforce Road and the um, sports access have to give way to the main flow of cycle traffic. Adams Road to the university is obviously a really popular route. Um, and you know, at, at big portions of the day, the flow along Adams Road into the university is greater than the side roads. So we'd like to reinforce that with this arrangement. Um, the chicane is intended to remain in place, though this proposal, if, if anyone knows the area in detail, there's a, a very tight chicane and a wall there. This arrangement is both wider and smoother. So it's still there so that no one can sort of blindly go straight out to the junction carrying a good bit of speed, but it is wider and um, intentionally kept wider so that anyone with larger bicycles can can pass with enough space um, and that there's no um, balls or anything to, to potentially hit. So it is expanded, but the chicane's in there to, to manage that speed a bit more. Um, the junction will have a raised table um, and, and new footway materials. Then onto Adams Road itself, I'd like to put a new um, four meter inlay into the center of Adams Road, um, which will sort of signify a cycling specific space and send the message to any drivers that still use Adams Road that is primarily intended as a cycle route and it's only there for um, vehicle access. It's not a through route or anything like that. And if they are using it, they need to keep their speeds down and give way to cyclists that are using the route because the space is primarily for them. As part of that, parking will be managed into specific bays and um, planting locations will be located um, at specific points with a view to 
discourage overtaking of cyclists. Um, so if you were a driver coming along here and behind a cyclist looking to overtake, um, you'd perhaps look ahead and either see cars parked or a narrowing from the planter and sort of realize that you need to hold back and um, stay behind the cyclists if it's not safe to overtake. That's the design philosophy behind this. Um, this arrangement also allows us to widen the footways there and make it um, make the pedestrian access into the university a bit nicer as well. Um, the particular restrictions on the bays are up for, just, uh, up for consideration as well as part of our next um, stage of design. We're looking at um, parking behaviours and um, identifying whether these are used mainly by um, university traffic, which could be you know, quite conveniently relocated to other streets, or if it's overnight, um, or to what extent it's used by overnight um, resident specific parking. So um, if this needs further restrictions or a resident parking scheme, um, that's something that may be looked at in the, in the more detailed design. Coming out then onto Grange Road, onto the existing traffic signals. Um, there are some wider traffic schemes proposed on Grange Road. Um, there will be a stage where those are rationalised together to make sure that they all work together. Um, there is a county, these are led by the county. There's also the Cambridge to Camborne bus route, um, which are all sort of influence how Grange Road's um, used. As far as our proposals, um, we don't propose too much on Grange Road. Um, if it comes to pass you know, before our implementation stage that none of the other projects are affecting Grange Road in the way that we, um, in a way that it would make a, a quality link for the Greenways, um, it may be that the Greenways project is the one that needs to um, come forward with further proposals for, for Grange Road, such as traffic calming or specific cycle lanes or, or those sort of proposals. Um, but as far as this proposal at this stage, nothing's proposed on Grange Road. So cyclists will go from Adams Road along the existing Grange Road essentially, and then rejoin Cedric Avenue. Cedric Avenue then, we're proposing to make one way eastbound only and uh, with a contraflow cycle lane. So cyclists will still be able to go in two ways, but um, vehicle traffic will be restricted to eastbound only. And that continues through. Um, the proposals aren't showing too many changes to on-street parking. We'd like to work with the um, colleges there to understand how the on-street parking is used, if it's required. Um, it'd be great if that on-street parking could be removed because the existing um, footways are very narrow. Um, there's some really nice mature trees, which you know, you'd never want to touch. Um, so there's really not much scope to widen the footways apart from maybe removing parking um, and the one way for, cycle, uh, for, for vehicles also opens the door um, in the, for, for a future scheme, you know, really being able to narrow the carriageway and make it better for walking and cycling and or using that extra width that used to be used for, for two-way driving um, for, for walking and cycling. And then that comes out onto the Silver Street Queens Road Junction um, where th there's just some island changes there to um, reinforce the one-way system. And that's a yeah, whistle-stop tour of the, the proposals. So happy to... Um, yeah, field any any questions? Uh, I can see that there's been some yes. items in the in the chat that we can run through. Yeah, fine. Thanks, Alex. We didn't cover the the, the Hardwick spur on this. It's, yes, I'll just come back. Sorry, it's at the other end of the design drawings. So also, the, Alex, the link to Barton as well. There's two, yes, I've spotted yeah. that as well. So bringing everyone back to the Combaton um, Long Road Roundabout, 
Uh, it is proposed to continue the link on the field side of, of the field just next to the roundabout um, as far as we can, as far as that field goes, continues through there. And then where the houses start at Barton Court to reintroduce it to the existing um, shared path, which um, could potentially be extended um, as part of a county scheme. Uh, that that would be in the same scheme that extended the shared footway um, just to the east of this screen. And then the second component that we've missed is the Hardwick link. So picking up at Bourne Brook, Long Road is here, the Bourne Brook running through here. So this is the link that we mentioned going towards Hardwick. So we're looking to run along the existing um, footpath with the side-by-side -side arrangement. Um, this proposal here was drawn up to sort of minimize how much we would need to um, cut up the existing fields. So it would run along the field edges and then make use of on-site farm tracks to make its way towards Hardwick and um, use the pumping station access to re-enter into Main Street. Um, this is obviously quite impactful to the um, landowner there um, and they've expressed that they would prefer that the route use the existing bridal way which would continue from here running along straight and then go south and then along here, which exits a bit further to the south. Yeah. Okay, thanks, Alex. I'm going to just start. Right, does anybody want to actually ask the question by putting up their blue hand? You know, don't be shy. Let's, um, and if uh, you would like to do that, so Mike Stapleton, I'm going to let you refer. So I'm just going to ask to unmute you. Mike, you should have asked your question now. Oh. <laughs> Sorry, Mike, I can't hear you at all. No, I'm sorry, I can't hear you. Mike, I'm afraid we can't hear you. Sorry, Mike, that's not, it's not going to, no, Mike, I'm afraid we can't hear you. So um, I'm sorry that's not going to work. Um, can you put your question in the chat? Um, I'll move to Councillor Hawkins. I can see that you put your hand up. I will allow you to, to unmute you. Councillor Hawkins, you should be able to speak now. Oh, hi, good evening. Can you hear me? Yes, can hear you, yes. Okay, um, thank, thank you for the presentation. I think the first thing I'm gonna say is I am extremely disappointed um, that right from the get-go, I've been requesting for the Combatant Greenway to extend um, to Caldicott. I see you've extended it to Hardway, which is good, but it um, seems to have stopped there and um, no further. And there's a lot of kids that will, you know, still go to Combatant Village College <laughs> from, from that end. Um, the, the section that is on Adams Road, now, except unless I'm mistaken, that is where the Cambon to Cambridge busway is supposed to be joining Grange Road, is it not? No, Thomas, did you want to just come back to Council? Can you clarify Morgan? that then, please? <laughs> Yeah, I, I can. So, so the Campbell to Cambridge route has has slightly changed. Uh, it now goes down the rifle range, uh, kind of uh, that access route uh, to to Grange Road. So it doesn't actually uh, impact on on Adams Road anymore. Uh, OK, I obviously didn't focus on that section when the uh, the, um, uh, the last consultation came. I was more focused on the bit towards um towards Cody Cup. Okay, thanks for that. Because that, that just immediately kind of raised alarm bells for me. So is there any chance at all of this extending towards Cody Cup or not? Well where we are is obviously the board has given us permission the board has decided on this set of routes. Um mm -hmm. 
and we are so we we're we're, con we're what we're doing is we're delivering uh we, we've got a the scope of the works is to deliver these routes okay the greenways as they stand don't connect all villages they don't meet all all active travel desires across the whole of south Cambridgeshire. Yeah, what, what we've been given is what we've been given and, and and we've been tasked with delivering these as you know as they stand that's not to say future there could be future rounds of greenways um but I think putting in this sort of high level, um, high quality infrastructure is, is is a first step. It doesn't mm. it doesn't meet all, all desires from 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 all all villages are in South Cambridgeshire. Um, that would be a massive program. So this is very much a, a could be a, could be a first stage of further of further improvements if that's what the councils, councillors, and the local community want, and we can find the funding. Well, they certainly want it. I'm sure I'm not the only one. I'm sure I'm not the only one who's um you know who's been um, asking for that. But there's other villages that want as well. Absolutely, anyway, absolutely. thank thank you. Yeah. Thank, thank you. Okay. Thank you. So I'm going. Thank you, Council Hawkins. I'm going to move on to um, Sean Hughes. I'm going to you. You put your hand up and click you to allow you to talk. And... Yep. Hello. Yeah. Can you hear me? I can hear you now, Sean. Please ask your okay. question. Yeah, it's about the um, extension to Hardwick. Yes. I'm not, it, can you clarify, is that two routes to join the Hardwick or, or one of two? You haven't decided which one. You're going to go with the bridal way or this uh, crossing down to the to the pumping station? I think it's an either or, but Alex will clarify. Yeah, yeah. I think if if there was a one route that went forward, um, if there was a preferred route, then it'd be only one route. Okay, it's just that that pumping station uh, access to the, the main road there. That's a very dangerous corner because cars come tearing around Carhill's corner there and they're coming around too fast. And there's been a couple of accidents right on that corner. If there's cyclists trying to cross the road there to get down that very tight uh, corner onto the pumping lane, that's quite dangerous. Yeah, yep. So we'd look for further improvements to make sure that there's enough visibility and yeah, that there's no issues with, with speed, but yeah, no. There, there is another possible route which comes opposite the primary school in Hardwick. There's a, a section of field that the farmer doesn't use next to the, um, uh, there's a hedge. And that sort of runs to diagonally down towards the, um, to the long, towards Long Road. That might be a better path. And it may not impact on the farmer's land as much because he doesn't use it. Okay. Yeah. So Alex, is that something you could take away and have a look at? Yeah, there is. there was a few that we looked at. One of them came out the very narrow section, so the existing permissive footpath that comes out sort of between the two houses um, that we think is a bit tough just because where it goes through a few copses of trees and we'd need to take out a few trees to get any reasonable width through there. So that's part of the constraint we've got on the sort of farmer's side. You know, they've got a couple of sort of tree breaks running through their land, I'm oh, sorry, over here, running through their land. So that's part of the consideration there, running along the bridal way. Um, we may have to look at how, how we interact with the hedge there and whether, um, you know, the path goes one side of the hedge and if the existing bridal way is left as is, or, but that's sort of what we need to resolve further. Um, but we are interested to hear about sort of feelings about where the route should pop out in Hardwick um, to, to yeah. see sort of what, where we want to um, take discussions. I think I sent you an email quite a few months ago, Alex, to say, could you include me in the, in the, uh, various routes so it'd be quite useful. I can send you an email later on if you want. Yeah, sure. Okay. Uh, the other thing was the, the interaction with the cycle, uh, provision for cycling along the Camborne to Cambridge busway. Yeah. How's that going to interact with this route? Because it comes quite close in various places and is it going to be provision to get from one to the other or how are you going to manage that traffic if you like that cycle traffic uh, thomas are you able to, to answer the relationship between c2c um cycle uh, active travel and this proposal 
Yes, uh, to an extent. So, um, I mean, what we're, we're looking to do here is to create a network of different options uh, for, for people to take, because clearly people do different journeys, people want to take different routes, uh, and we want to get as many people, you know, utilising um, the network as possible. Uh, the kind of one, one of the closest points is where um, we are on Long Road. And uh, one of the things we are looking at kind of across Long Road uh, is to do a kind of traffic calming scheme along the length so that that link between the two uh, will be easier to, to do in that area. Um, so we've uh, that there's a, one of our proposals and you can see it on, online is to reduce the speed limit down to 40 miles an hour and to put in a number of traffic calming measures. And again, we're looking for feedback on that through through this engagement. What we've put in is a number of kind of giveaways um, and a number of kind of uh, points where where we're trying to force traffic to to, to remain slower because we're conscious that Long Road is a, is a very fast um, route as it is at, at the moment. Um, and therefore, you know, what we're hoping um, by achieving that kind of reduction is that you start to provide a, a link between between the two at that location. Um, but in terms of the relationship between the two, you know, the, the point here is that, that they are options, uh, you know, for, for people to take. Uh, and we're trying to create, you know, the, the different options for people to, to take across the network. Um, and that's why there's things like uh, the link to, to Barton as well. Um, so that you can link across to where we're doing the Barton Greenway. Uh, so it's about about the network. Okay, thanks, um, Thomas. Sean, did you have any more questions? Uh, that, thanks very much, Leslie. Okay, thank you very much. Um, uh, fine, I'm going to go to Daniel Strauss next. Um, Daniel, um, I see you've put some stuff in the chat. Are these questions that you want to ask? Yes, hi there, thanks ever so much. Um, Adams Road, as you I'm sure all know, is the busiest peak time cycle route in Cambridge. We feel it's absolutely essential that traffic calming measures are included in your design. This is because without parked cars, um, we believe that uh, cars will uh, race along the road, particularly in the evenings accessing and leaving the athletic centre with many of the uh, local residents and cyclists have uh, witnessed this. Could you um, outline any suggestions you have for traffic calming uh, along the length of the road and particularly at the Sylvester Road Junction? Thank you. Thanks Daniel. Alex did you want to just address that? I don't know if you want to get the, there we go, you're ahead of me. Yeah, yep sure. So uh, a key opportunity, I guess, on Adams Road, um, and, and one that's not really shown as yet, uh, is the introduction of sort of raised traffic tables or um, sinusoidal speed humps um, placed at regular intervals. They should have relatively little impact on, on the cycling comfort of the route, um, and, but become quickly uncomfortable uh, if, if anyone's carrying any speed above 20 miles an hour, which will be the speed limit on Adams Road. Um, particularly, those are well suited around junctions, so potentially a raised table could be introduced, um, sort of around around each. Well, they're just well placed around junctions, so that that sort of extent, um, which yeah, again, we'll we'll just go to manage, uh, help manage vehicle speeds when when there's no cars parked there to, to act as that horizontal traffic calming. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Dad. Could Thank I also, have, yep. could I very quickly also ask, I don't want to waste your time, but just um, do you believe that having any parking on the road will be, um, will improve safety? Isn't there an argument for uh, these parking bays to be um, purely used as passing places? Um, given the fact that the central carriageway is only four metres. Uh, that's, so, that's an interesting point, Alex. I mean, is that something you need to go away and think about or? Yeah, yeah. I think we have to manage sort of any residents that do need to still park there if they don't have off-street parking. And that's probably our, you know, that the, 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 the we acknowledge that some people will just still need to park and use those on street bays um, because the, you can park along the whole length of it. Um, that's they're, they're also a useful traffic calming tool. So I think 
would have to consider as a system working with the speed humps uh, if they're put in, working with the planters um, and working with these and if they need to be passing places. Um, but we'd, as long as that system still works, um, then that's something that we could look at as well. Okay, okay thank you. Thanks, Daniel. Um, any more questions? Okay, fine. Um, I don't see anybody else with their hand up, so I'm going to start to uh, plough through the uh, chat. Um, there's a few statements here um, um, which we will take away. Um, I'm going to focus on the uh, questions. Um, right, so the first one here, Alex, is just uh, the bridge over Bornbrook. Uh, that needs to be, is that going to be suitable for horse riders as well as cyclists? I imagine it will be. Also, yes. it's the Bimbrook. We've just been to be corrected. Clear. Yes. Oh, yeah, sorry, been corrected. Yep. It is the Bimbrook, and and yeah, Anthony is right. Yeah, thank you, Anthony. Sorry. Um, anyway. Yes. <laughs> yep. So that uh, being being part of a bridal way, um, there's no intention of further restricting horse riding. Uh, so it'll be designed to to carry horse traffic uh, in terms of strength, in terms of making sure that the surface isn't slippery or anything, uh, and making sure that um, the uh, handrails and so on are at a suitable height to safely be used. So yeah. Okay, thanks, Alex. Um, I've got the three questions here from Stephen Ross. He said, uh, first of all, he says where they where there are grey paths and grass tracks running parallel. What are the respective widths, widths, and what is the material that will, that will be used on the grey bits? So, the material isn't defined, which why we it's why we haven't sort of come forward and said it is specifically this material. Um, that will be part of our next stage of design. Um, mm -hmm. So, at the moment, we know that it will need to be a sealed surface and and smooth to carry walking and cycling traffic. Mm -hmm. um, safely but also make it accessible um, for for people with mobility impairments and so on um, so that sort of sets the limit on what we might you know we don't want to make it discriminatory for people with disabilities importantly and we want to make it as efficient as possible for for people um, using it for cycling so okay. the gray portion will be some form of sealed uh, under this proposal some form of sealed sealed surface um, there's wide variety of sort of asphalt based materials and different colors uh, with permeability um, that all needs to be balanced with cost maintainability and um, performance under different conditions you know how they perform when these fall on them or under frost conditions so we're not in a position to to say what what the material surface exactly will be but we're very keen to hear if there's any particular um, comments or performance requirements that we need to be considering further uh, other than the ones that I've sort of mentioned. Um, the widths for the majority of the route we're setting out in our core sort of scheme proposal at three meters um, for the sealed surface um, and they vary in our in in the core scheme um, instruction but I think they're shown here at two meters but for the majority of the route it's just uh, vegetation so the usable width is likely to be wider but will definitely be clearing and um, a, a two meter path for okay. you know, uh, yeah thanks um so just a question here second question from Stephen. hardwick's the largest village on the green greenway and the largest feeder to cvc which is combatant village college what provisions are planned to help hardwick students get to travel to cvc i think um um, I think we've 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 shown what we we are proposing. The primary function of the greenways is for traffic between the villages and into Cambridge. So it might not provide all, uh, all the, the all the cycling needs that Hardwick needs improving. Um, but I, Alex, I'm right in thinking that students could use this to get between Hardwick and Compton, but it might not be the most direct route that they want to use. Yeah, yeah, that's right. So okay. they'll have the traffic-free route. On the northern section yeah. and then the competent improvements okay um, a couple of people have asked uh, this question so the, the, the there has been an in-person event held in Competon. could we have an in-person event in hardwick um the answer to that is is we're obviously doing a consultation a rolling consultation across all of the 12 greenways as thomas at, outlined we've identified that in each one of these we will do an online event and, and one in-person event 
um, across the 12. So we've got no more plans to do any more events at this stage in any other villages. But what we have found is by running the online events, uh, we reach a wider audience and a different audience to those people that normally come to online events. So at the moment, we've got no more plans for uh, any more events at this stage in the consultation on this on this greenway. But that's not to say that the dialogue won't continue with people like the, the uh, parish council, elected officials and other, other, other groups as we, we go forward in this process. Thomas, did you want to add anything to that? No, I think I think that did covers it. I mean, we, we really did try to look for an opportunity to, to do an event in Hardwick, and unfortunately, we, we couldn't shoehorn it in uh, at the at the beginning um, because we yeah we failed to secure a venue, but we did try our best. Um, so unfortunately, yeah, we didn't. But at, that's you know we did drop kind of postcards and leaflets to to all kind of residents in the villages, um, and we you know did invite them to this event, uh, and we are we did obviously we were there for five hours uh, in Combatin, and, and we got quite a few residents from Hardwick uh, who attended that event. Yeah, thanks Thomas. Um, there's a number of people who've asked in, in the chat who've now asked their question so I'm not going to re read them. There's a number of statements which we'll just take away. Um, um, uh, so I'm just moving down. The question here from Simon Carter, does the Southern Hardwick route run along the port, port, port way to link up with Main Street? So Alex, so that's one for you. Yes, um, it'll run along the Bridal Way, I get, I admit. So the current footway, permissive footway, runs yeah. along through here, straight through the field and comes out uh, at the pub. Yeah. Um, with the, the secondary route that the landowner suggested is running along here and then following the Bridal Way to the south. So if that's the port way, then yes, that will be the proposed route that was suggested to us. So potentially coming out here just south of the, the small um, residential development there. Um, okay, so that's fine. Again, where you've where people have made statements or uh, offered uh, sort of opinions, I will take those on board. I'm just focusing on the questions here. Um, um, so there's just one here Mike, from Mike Stapleton, which he says he doesn't consider the traffic needs a, 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 a long, long road means that we need a separate path for cycling. Um, so is, is you know, um, um, so I think that's one point that you might want to talk to uh, Alex. Uh, and um, and he suggested uh, signing the road via Green End and the branch road as a good alternative. So that's just a statement. but. Um, and if it's built, which side? Okay, answer. So the question here is: Is why are we putting a separate route down Long Road, given the traffic levels on Long Road for cyclists? And why have we chosen the east side rather than the west side? I think that's essentially a summary of that question and a couple of other questions. So, um, yeah, there's no no footpath provision, although yeah, we acknowledge that it's quite a long long way in terms of footpath provisions but yeah there's, there's no no footpaths no cycling facilities on um on long road so and, and the traffic environment's quite hostile the existing width is very narrow on long road um yeah. and there's hedgerows on both sides so sort of more on a technical side it's very difficult to accommodate anything on the road um nor probably even with the most traffic calming on the road would we be able to get a speed lower than 40 miles an hour, which is still uncomfortable mm -hmm. for the vast majority of potential users that would like yeah. to use the greenways. For me, Alex, you've gone a bit quiet, and maybe for others as well. I don't know if your headphones are. Okay, was that? That's, that's a bit better, better, yeah. Okay. Maybe your thing just gone. Um, so that's good. Um, there's a procedural question, which I uh, hear from Alex Harmer, which I think one for you, Thomas, really. Which is, um, is it possible if you that you receive sufficient objection from the public and councillors that the Greenway isn't built? I'm strongly supportive of my concern that those against the plans will see that the scheme is cancelled. Um, yeah, I can answer that. Um, I mean, from from the political perspective, uh, the scheme uh, budget has been signed off and approved following the consultation that took place in uh, kind of 1819. There were there were consultations in all the Greenways at that point where they looked at kind of 
different routings and things and this is where this route was kind of set out uh, in a paper so i think politically um they've already kind of uh, gone through that kind of yes no for the greenway um and you know there was the support has been given by by the politicians i think uh, at this stage what uh, you know may occur through this section is that you know small uh, you know changes might might come forward um uh, obviously hardwick is an example where we haven't got a specific defined route as of yet um but the majority of this route is set following that consultation that took place uh, and therefore you know what we're really engaging on right now is is trying to get views as as have been expressed actually in in the chat uh, on on things like traffic calming, you know, you know, we've put forward a proposal. What are people's thoughts on that, so that we can um, take those on board in in the next stage? Um, just just to kind of highlight, this will lead to a um, a paper in December to the executive board, which will really seek approval for that kind of finalised um, design off the back of this engagement. So um, I I think the um, uh, the the opportunity for for this to be kind of stopped um is uh, is relatively limited given that context okay thanks very much um i know some people are saying i hope you haven't answered my question i'm trying to work through them all in a little bit, bit of an order um so uh oh, so we've got a question again again about adams road here alex which is what provision will be made for large vehicles to pass each other um there are a large number of coaches that do visit the sports centre as well as to delivery and utility vehicles. So I think there's a balance here to be struck between as prioritising cycleways, making it traffic calming, but I think, you know, yeah, of having course. large vehicles access the Adams Road. So these wider sections between the traffic calming features will yes. function as the, the passing points. So okay. five metres will be tight for them, purposely so. Um, but they'll be able to pass each other at those locations and they're spaced at suitable locations along the route so that they shouldn't need to reverse or anything like that. Um, so I've, there are a number of equestrian uh, questions which, I'll, which I think we've already addressed in the public meeting and in our engagement through the, uh, the, uh, the, the non-demotrized users group. So I will come to one or two that I think are new, but I just want to focus on the other questions first from, from the general public. There's a question here from Anthony Gill about what, what will be the lighting of, on the route? Um, I think he's mainly thinking in the sort of more rural areas and, and what, you know, what lighting is proposed and how much light pollution do you think will, 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 cause, will be caused by the lighting? Yeah, so we're, we're looking to replicate the existing lighting provisions. So if there is highway standard lighting, we'll make sure that light columns are relocated so that suitable highway level um, lighting is provided. So that, that's mainly on those, the sections closer into town. Um, there's obviously significant ecological constraints with providing additional lighting. So our teams are currently going out and, and looking at what potential habitats are there and, and what potential um, sensitive species and so on are there. So that all um, gets considered in our lighting approach. So um, it's likely that, it, you know, floodlights and so on won't be feasible due to the lengths involved and due to just the existing environment. Um, but we'd like to potentially on, on corners as a safety measure, introduce things like solar studs, um, which have relatively minor levels of light pollution will mm -hmm. need to be verified by our environmental colleagues um, if there is specific impacts and that will form the, the, the core of, of where and how we're able to provide lighting. Um, and, and solar studs are the ones that go in the ground, aren't sorry, they? Yes. So, I mean, uh, people have, are familiar with the Cambridge, uh, uh, the guided busway, you know, through Histon and on to Swavesea. Some of that section has solar studs as, as a cycleway next to the greenway. You can see, you'll be able to see what the lighting looks like when you put solar studs in somewhere um just moving on to Stephen ross's question he, he's just asked about what is there any any additional plans for traffic calming in hardwick if, um you i think we've talked about traffic calming on both exit point but is there any additional traffic calming what's the scope of traffic calming in in hardwick that we're considering so one of the concerns with coming out and using the brighter way is that we come out a bit further south um yeah of the population centre. So I think if that was the proposals to come forward, we'd have to look at mm -hmm. traffic calming to make it a bit more comfortable to cycle on on through Hardwick on the carriageway. 
uh, we don't want to discourage any potential users um, because they've got you know a really un unpleasant environment through the Hardwick Town Centre and that acts as a barrier to them using the route. So that's something that's definitely on our on our radar. But yeah, happy to hear feedback about how or, or yeah. what extent. Yeah. Yeah, I mean that's a really good point, Alex, about feedback. And this is a consultation that is running uh, for a, a few more days uh, and a couple of, a couple more weeks. Um, 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 and I um, uh, would really encourage you all to, if you've got comments, having seen this presentation or feedback, um, we have an online survey, but if you want to, to feedback by just dropping in his email via contact us, we're happy to take them. We'll take that into consideration, any comments, things. Any comments in the chat here will be taken as part of the, the feedback as well. Um, I'm just going to, I haven't, can't see any other questions. I want to just cover off this, um, um, some of this. I, all right, fine, I just want to do this. Are you planning to lower the, the, the speed in Coton to 20 miles an hour? And then I'll move on to, I've, I think there's three new equine horse questions I will deal with. Um, um, yeah, yes. I think we'd, we'd look to get it at least to 30 through the town specifically. If 20 is realistic with the type of traffic coming that we're able to implement, then obviously that's ideal, but it is quite a strategic vehicle route. It's used uh -huh. as a diversion route for the M11 when it's when works are on it or, or heavy accidents. So it's a very constrained section in terms of what we're able to to put in okay. um, but we obviously still want to make it as safe as possible so speed limits will go a long way to to help that okay fine i'm just going to then talk the three questions here i think um, linda's just uh, has uh, linda from the british Horse society uh, wants to understand how going um access in the path on at so this, this is at the bottom of Long Road, yeah, so where we've got the arrangement of the mini roundabout. Um, how do you get onto the path, Alex? Yes, uh, we went through this so uh, in in person. So we haven't okay, been able so to update it in the... person. I'm not dealing with it again. Okay. Okay. Um, thanks very much. So, uh, uh, Linda, our answer is what we answered when we met you in person. Um, um, uh, so the, the question here from Leslie. Um, can you confirm whether the bridal ways will be left as they are and the hard paths will be put alongside it or are existing bridal ways going to be dug up? Um, yeah, so um, this is an item I know we're, we're in discussion about and appreciate the, the concerns that have been raised. Um, and, you know, I, I've discussed this directly with, with Linda and, and Leslie and we'll yeah, continue okay. to do so. And I would just add that um, obviously we have... What we're proposing is, is what we're proposing here. We're here to, to get that feedback um, and, you know, we will respond to that uh, and, you know, we, we will engage through the, the, the forums that we have uh, and make okay. sure that that discussion continues. Okay, and then I just wanted to, the, the final because Leslie's asked a couple of times. Um, when the, the bridge over the M11, um, um, will, that, will, will that be suitable for a, a equestrian use uh, for your horses, Alex? Yeah, so since it's designated as bride away, yeah. um, we'll we'll maintain that same level of access. But okay. um, there's no proposals to the M11 bridge, so it'll be the existing provision. Okay, fine. That's really helpful. Um, I'm not. I think everything else that we've been right now. I hope that, and, and it, it's you know, I'm not perfect at this. I think I covered everyone's questions substantively. Um, um, who's asked a question or, uh, and then written it? So. Uh, things well, the, 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 what's in the chat will be kept captured and well that will, will be back um leslie we've just answered uh, the question about m11 the what what is the bright what 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 is there as the bridal way we wouldn't we, we you know we would continue um so shall we move on to next steps unless anybody wants to put the hand up um um um, um, um uh, it, it's, oh right, Lucy. I'm going. To, right, I'm going to allow you to talk, and you can ask your question, Lucy. Can you? Oh, sorry. Been a bit temperamental, Lucy. Sorry. You should be able to speak now. 
Can you hear me? I can hear you, Lucy. Please ask your question. This, this relates to the one-way position on Sidrick Avenue. Right, okay, yes. What do you think is going to happen to the traffic? What route will they take? Traffic coming from the centre of town, but Silver Street, that now that now moves westward on, on Sidrick Avenue, and yet you're um, st stopping that movement. How are they going to reach places such as Wordsworth Grove or Ridley Hall Road? Yeah, so... Alex, one for you, mate. Yeah, sure. So um, part of this next stage is, is confirming the proposals. So part of that will be an exercise to establish um, the volume of traffic that do that and what extent that will impact the uh, alternative roads. Um, there will be a diversion. So Silver Street, I believe, has the, the bus gate there. But all the same, um, those people who are on Newham Road, say, uh, will have to act come around um, and, and access Sidrick Avenue via Grange Road or some of the other roads um, and we'll need to make sure that those junctions have the capacity to do that um, to, to make sure that that is feasible. If it's not possible you know then conceivably we'd need to upgrade the other junctions to cater for that diverted traffic and that but is I mean, how, I'm, 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 I'm sorry but you're saying diverting the traffic that currently goes from Silver Street westward on Sidrick Avenue, and, and then in a way, but we'll turn left, for example, Ridley Hall Road uh, to get to Newnham Walk and Wordsworth Grove. How is that traffic going to reach the destination? Because there's heavy traffic there. Yeah, that, that's what we'll have to make sure that the network has the capacity to cater for that diverted traffic, the, the traffic that does have to go north and south on Queens Road, rather than continuing on Cedric Avenue. And if the impact of that is such that either junctions become over capacity or it causes anything unsafe, then that's the bar at the feasibility for this option. And it no but, longer oh, becomes feasible in our view. And that would be the call where the, two, the, the one way isn't feasible and it has to remain two way. So that's the exact um, concern, I guess, that we'll look into establish in the next one. What we're looking to establish at this stage is, you know, what, what um, issues do people have with this proposal? And I think you've raised exactly one that, that will be on, on um, the tip of people's minds and we'll look to resolve in the next uh, stage of design. You see, I mean, currently, um, for example, Morton Lane cannot take that traffic. It cannot take more than um, narrow, narrow vehicles. And it it's, um, has no pavement and carries a heavy pedestrian load too, which goes straight down the carriageway. So you're in a way isolating Ridley Hall Road, Newnham Walk and Wordsworth Grove, unless they travel all the way around um, Newnham Road, Barton Road, Grange Road and Cedric Avenue. Yeah, if, if they come out of Ridley Hall Road, um, they won't really have access. So it won't be a huge catchment that's, you know, they, they won't be able to go from here further out there to access the colleges. So, but I take your point. So any of those diversionary impacts, you know, if, if people are wanting to go down Malting Lane um, and, and that's unsuitable for the diverted traffic, that, that all gets looked at. It, it you know. Okay, Lucy. I mean, thank. We, we, it's an interesting point you raise. I think if you, I mean, if you could take that point in, because yeah. it was a point that we raised in two thousand and eighteen, yeah, and hasn't been addressed so far in this scheme. Okay, that's, so it that's, does. It does now need addressing. Okay, that's really useful feedback. Thank you very much. Lucy. Thank you very much. That's fine. Um, okay, good. Um, on that point. Thomas, do you want to move on to next steps? And I, I think we can um, do that next. Yeah, that's fine. I'll just wait. Alex, just bring up that slide for me, if that's OK. Ryan, on your technical mouse tonight, Alex. Thank yeah. you. Just, just one final slide. Gosh, it's gone on the different screen. Here with me, sorry about that. Okay. 
think uh, the internet's getting hot like the rest of us, Alex. <laughs> <laughs> Luckily, it's not as hot as it was over the last couple of days because that was borderline uh, unbearable. But anyway, um, thank yeah, you, okay. Alex. So um, as I've just, uh, I actually highlighted uh, when answering one of the questions, um, everything that we receive through the engagement uh, period, which is due to end soon, uh, will be assessed uh, and then we will be updating the designs based on that and taking forward the, the preliminary design. We will then be going to the GCP executive board in December for permission um, to put in a planning application in the areas that planning is required, which won't be all of it. Um, and I'll come on to that just in a second. Um, and to take forward some quick wins, uh, as well as to, to approve the outline business case. Once we've done that during 2023, um, we are looking to do some potential early works where only council land is required and where no additional planning permission is needed. So where it's within the highway boundary um, and where it is um, uh, and where, you know, we, we don't need those additional approvals, um, we will look to do kind of some of those early works. Principally, the areas that we're looking at for Combaton Greenway are on that is within the city. Um, so kind of the, the stuff outside of the city um, does require a lot more kind of engagement with, with landowners and, and such like. Um, we'll then be putting in a planning application for, for kind of the rest of the route. Uh, and then um, following that in 24, 25, uh, we'll be looking to construct uh, the remaining sections uh, of the route. The overall network is due to be completed by the end of 2025 and a high level programme will be going to the GCP Executive Board in September um, just to start kind of identifying what that, that wider programme uh, is looking like. That's everything. So thank you very much. Thank you very much, Thomas, as well. Um, thank you for your participation tonight. Um, 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 and uh, for your feedback, we'll capture all of your comments. Um, please do fill in the survey online. That would be really welcome. Um, you, if you wish to review this, we will put this on YouTube so you can have a look at it again. All the all of the documents that uh, Alex has talked through is on is on the consult cams page, so you can download and look at your leisure individual things. Um, um, Alex has just put um, our excellent tech support has just put up the link to the console cams page and the things so if you want to download anything and have a look at it in much more forensic detail that's available to you uh, thomas has outlined the, the process going forward um my name remains to thank alex and thomas for their presentations tonight and um at that point i will say the meeting is closed thank you all and i hope we'll have a very good evening thank you for your time